Welcome to Critical Issues Commentary, the radio ministry of Twin City Fellowship, a non-denominational Christian church in Minneapolis, Minnesota, or on the web at cicministry.org. This is Dick Cuffle, your host for the next half hour. We're speaking today with Bob DeWay, pastor of Twin City Fellowship and author of Critical Issues Commentary. Our topic today is The Problems with Personal Words from God. It's going to be an interesting topic, Robert. You started off with scripture in your article and set a base for this thing. What was that? Well, it's one that we reference so often. I hope it doesn't get redundant (laughs) for our listeners, but it seems like it is the scripture that we need in this time in history because it's what's really being challenged. And it's Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers, in the prophets in many portions and in many ways in these last days has spoken to us in his son whom he appointed heir of all things through whom also he made the world and then in order to bring in the teaching of the apostles i also quote hebrews 2 2 and 3 for if the word spoken through angels proved unalterable and every transgression and disobedience received a just penalty How will we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? After it was first spoken through the Lord, it was confirmed to us by those who heard. How was it confirmed? Through signs and wonders. And the Word, the New Testament, right? What I'm saying is Christ spoke, but that doesn't mean that the authoritative revelation that came from Christ was limited to the red letters. Okay. Excellent. The apostles were given Christ's teaching and he confirmed it and spoke it to us, and it comes to us through the New Testament. And we end up with a written account that we can go back to that gives us the assurance that we have the truth. Right. See, the phrase there, spoken through angels, is a Jewish idea that somehow angels were involved when Moses received the revelation. Yes. So the author of Hebrews is talking about the Torah okay, oh, okay. That, that Moses received. Yes. Now, that was written down. And it had been their binding revelation for all these centuries. Yes. So Jesus comes. He's the greater Moses, which is also argued in Hebrews. He gives us the new covenant revelation. And it was written down, so it is our binding revelation, whereby we know what God has said. Excellent. In our city recently, somebody came to visit who has a different view. Yeah, they were doing a seminar that said that if you followed the processes that this guy had developed, you will hear God speak to you guaranteed. Wow. So you get your own personal revelations because you follow this technique, which is not found in the Bible, by the way. And when you receive this, these ideas, these spontaneous thoughts that come into your brain are God speaking to you. And this guy guarantees it. That gives us the bookends for today's discussion, right? Well, that's the very position that I'm refuting with this article. Okay, so what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to talk about personal words from God. And what that means is that people believe that God is continually speaking to them and that these words are revealing God's will in a way that is not revealed specifically in Scripture. And... They believe that having heard these new words from God that aren't Scripture or not implications and applications of Scripture, that they have to follow this will because it's been revealed to them. Okay. We have two categories that you speak of when you speak of knowledge. There's legitimate knowledge out there. And one of them has to do with general knowledge, I would guess, uh, observation of the creation. And what's the other? Actually, there's three categories, but one of them is not valid. Okay. Well, um, two categories or three categories? Well, there's three categories, but only two are valid. Ah, tell me. Okay. Well, let's read the scripture that I'm basing this on, which is Deuteronomy 29, 29, which it says, the secret things belong to God, but those things that are revealed are for you and your children and your children's children. Now, that okay. gives us two categories. So we got secret and revealed. Right. But one is not for us. And which one would that be? The secret. Ah, Okay. If God hasn't revealed it, and it's some sort of spiritual knowledge, we have no way of knowing it. And every attempt to learn those secret things, the word secret stands behind our word occult, 
every attempt to learn secret things that God has chosen not to reveal involves some form of divination or dabbling in the occult. So they're to stay away from those things as they were warned in Deuteronomy 18. You got any idea how many books would have to be removed from the bookshelves if that were acted on? Well, exactly. The bookshelves are full of occult books, and there's people claiming that they had a conversation with God. It's Neil Donald Walsh, and he writes it down, so now you can know what God's saying. But all they had was the law that was revealed by God. Now, this is not invalidating general revelation because general revelation is what can be observed using our five physical senses and our rational minds. Okay, but when you speak of three things, you said secret, revealed, and now where are you getting your third thing? Revealed through either special revelation or general revelation. Two categories. So you break that into two. Yeah, two categories of revealed. Okay. All right. Okay, now general revelation doesn't reveal anything special beyond what anybody can observe. That's why we use the term special or general. Yes. Okay, or specific or general. So it's absolutely legitimate for you to go observe a garden and learn how to raise tomatoes. <laughs> okay. okay. Any of that kind of information is not forbidden. Sure. But it's neither is it secret because it can be discerned by using the tools that God gave us to learn. Yes. So what I'm doing with this, and I've done this other times, we talked about this when we were doing radio on Theophostic ministry, is that take these ideas that are being taught and see where they fit. So somebody comes to us and says, okay, God told me that the problem you have, let's just use Theophostics, is your first memory event, and you need a new interpretation of that. All right. All right, so then I started looking at the categories. Does the Bible teach this? No, it does not. Excellent. So it's not special revelation. Is it general revelation? Is this observable, or is this something you can prove? Well, in this case, the founder of that ministry didn't even offer proof yes. from general revelation. Yes. Plus, you need special revelation to make it work because Jesus has to talk to you. Yes. So what I did was conclude that this is secret occult knowledge that's forbidden. Yes. Now, this isn't that complicated. Yes. But it's amazing how few Christians are willing to abide by what the Bible teaches on this matter. They want this secret knowledge so bad that they're willing to go into very dangerous situations to get it. Let's break that out a little because... Your next portion in your paper was we have a problem in considering personal words from God. They're special revelations in some form, and you have a problem with that. That's what I'm doing with this. Okay, let's just analyze this. All right. If God speaks to somebody, and they say, okay, God spoke to me, and he told me I'm supposed to move to Florida. Yes. All right. Is that general revelation? No. No, it's not. Is it special revelation? that's been mediated through God's ordained spokesperson. No. And that's a very important thing. That's why yes. we started Hebrews. Yes. So you can't get it from the Bible. It can't, you can't get it from any of the apostles or prophets or anybody who spoke for God in the Bible. Correct. So it has to fall into that third category of secret things that belong to God. Yes. So the person then claims to be gaining this information and it falls into a bad category. It falls wow. into the category of what belongs to God that he hasn't revealed. Wow. Okay. And most Christians don't agree with me on this. Huh? But I think that this paper that we wrote back in January, February 2007, a year ago, very, very strong argument that will point out that they've got some serious problems with their theology. Why don't we uh, give that as a reference right now so that the people, if they wanted to read this in its entirety, could go to it? Okay, go to cicministry.org. Then there's a tab called Articles. Choose that, and they'll all be there in order of publication. And go scroll down to January, February 2007. The article's entitled Personal Words from God. How People Become False Prophets to Themselves. I love that title. What article number is that? That's issue number 98. Okay. And oh, good. let me just give my thesis here in one shot. Here's my thesis or my proposition. I will defend the idea that God, since the days of the apostles, 
has been ruling providentially rather than through further specific revelation, whether through authoritative mediators or directly to individuals.